Welcome to the new Ice Age. For years now we've been hearing that the Sun is trundling towards a new Maunder Minimum and that will catapult us into a new Ice Age. This is all supposed to start in 2010 with the beginning of Solar Cycle 24. And so we've been in this new Ice Age for about six years. But there are some aspects of it that I don't quite understand. Namely, where are all the lower temperatures? And more importantly, where is all the ice? In fact, the reverse seems to be happening. Temperatures seem to be increasing and the ice melting away. So in this video, we're going to examine the link between solar activity and global temperatures. Despite claims by the climate experts that Earth is getting warmer, the media seem to be hyping this upcoming ice age. Here are just a few examples. And if you do a Google search on the upcoming ice age, you get over 4 million hits. The TV stations, radio talk shows and newspapers often trot out a series of so-called experts that agree that an ice age is coming. Here are some examples. Piers Corbin in 2013 declared, The Ice Age is upon us. An old favourite, John Coleman in 2013, confidently declared that, as a scientist, which he isn't, I know that global warming does not exist at all. Ben Davidson, uh, aka Suspicious Observer, confidently predicted that global cooling will be starting in the beginning of Solar Cycle 24. Adjust Matsoff in 2013 confidently predicted that a new ice age would be starting in 2014. Clifford Ollier declared that solar cycle 24 had started and we can expect serious cooling. Meanwhile, Professor Harjit Alawalia declared that the last solar minimum of this kind was in 1810 and resulted in a cold period. As we shall see, none of these statements are true. As this whole Ice Age thing was supposed to start with the beginning of Solar Cycle 24, let's take a look at the status of Solar Cycle 24. It seemed to start in late 2009, and rose slowly to a peak in early 2012. Many considered that was the end of the cycle. However, two and a half years later, a second larger peak formed, and that is now considered the maximum. Since then, solar activity has been steadily declining. Now, there is still a possibility that we'll get a third peak, but I think that's increasingly unlikely. So we are now in the decline towards solar minimum, and at the current rate, we'll probably have solar minimum between 2018 and 2019. However, there's a second, slower scenario that I subscribe to that says we'll have a much later solar minimum between 2020 and 2022. Well, here are the sunspot numbers for the last 400 years. And the two classic periods that are associated with cold weather are the Maunder Minimum and the Dalton Minimum. Here is Solar Cycle 24 over here on the right. But there have been seven other solar cycles of similar or smaller size over that last 400 year period. And you will notice that none of them were followed by an ice age, mini or otherwise. So that would say the amplitude of the most recent solar cycle is not an indicator of whether we're going to get an ice age or not. So let's note what the periods of low solar activity are. That's the Maunder Minimum and the Dalton Minimum. But you also notice there's some periods of relatively high solar activity. There's one in the end of the 18th century, one in the middle of the 19th century, and one in the middle of the 20th century. So what we're going to do is compare these particular periods with global temperatures and see if there's a pattern. Here is the global average temperature taken over the last 1,000 years. So let's put on this plot these times of high and low solar activity and see if there's any correlation with temperatures. Let's start with uh, the Maunder Minimum, which have the biggest effect of all because it was a very long period, 70 years, when we had almost no sunspots, so very low solar activity. That's there, and I don't see any particular change in temperature during that time frame. There should be a big dip if there's any influence of solar activity at all, and there isn't. Let's try the Dalton Minimum, which is just at the beginning of the 19th century, and there it is. Yes, global temperatures are lower during that time, but they started getting lower about 30 or 40 years before the Dalton Minimum, and carried on getting lower about 50 years after the Dalton Minimum. So again, there seems to be no correlation. How about taking a look at the times of high solar activity, and see if there's any relation there. The one at the end of the 18th century shows a general decline in global temperatures, even though solar activity was relatively high. Go to the middle of the 19th century, that's there, and we have some of the lowest global temperatures uh, of this whole plot. So once again, there seems to be no correlation between 
uh, solar activity and global temperatures. And finally, the one in the middle of the 20th century is there, and that corresponds to a period that a lot of the global warming denialists call a cooling period. So here is the global temperature over the last 50 years. I've done a mathematical fit to the data, and the trend in the data is 0.17 degrees centigrade per decade. However, our ice age was supposed to start at the beginning of solar cycle 24. That's in 2009. So let's see what the trend would be for just those last six years. Having done a similar analysis there, I find that the trend is 0.31 degrees centigrade per decade. So in the years when we're supposed to be having an ice age, the actual increase in global temperatures has been nearly double that of the last 50 years. Some ice age. So what can we conclude from all of this? First, that solar cycle 24 is lower than average in its intensity, but is not particularly unusual. Second, low solar activity is not associated with lower global temperatures, nor is high solar activity associated with higher global temperatures. There is absolutely no scientific evidence that we are entering into a new Maunder minimum, and there's even less scientific evidence that we are entering a new mini ice age as a result of decreasing solar activity. So all in all, the media and those experts are talking nonsense. That's it for today. More on this subject later. Uh, bye for now. Do have a happy new year.